Good morning, gentlemen wise. It's school time here. It's gonna be a good day. I'll tell you what, I have a problem because I have three things to do today and each one of them require a very different wardrobe. But because I now live in a small town far away from the city, I have to go to the city for all three of these things, but I will not be able to come back home. So I have the problem of, do I really want to bring three sets of clothing. <laughs> now, I'm not the type of person that's easily embarrassed or easily feels out of place, even if I should feel out of place. first experimenting with formal dress, I would, uh, you know, I would dress up a little too much for certain situations, and I didn't really care because I like dressing up. But, you know, over the years, I've realized that you don't want to buck the trend too much. You don't want to also allow social pressure to squelch your personality. So, in other words, you should always try to integrate your personality into your clothing. So, the three things today that I have to figure out how to dress for are one, a developer conference, two, a formal fundraiser, I'm pretty sure it's formal, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure, and three, a college homecoming celebration, it's not really, home. they call it a spectacular, so all very different genres of things, and I'll tell you one thing I hate about these days, back in the day, back in the 50s, in the 60s, maybe even from the 30s on, if you were gonna leave your house, you'd put on a nice suit. If you're gonna go to the movies, you'd put on a suit. If you were gonna go to travel, you would put on a suit. If you were gonna go to a concert, to a theater, you would put on a suit. It was so easy. We've made our lives so difficult these days when it comes to clothing. So the way you dress signals a lot of things. It can signal status confidence it can signal bad things too like you're clueless you don't know what you should wear so one of those situations that I'll be in today is the developer conference my uh, $800 camera just fell off of its camera mount because the suction cup ran out of suction. So back to the developer conference. So the developer conference is a difficult place to know what to wear. Mostly because I'm new to this area, so I haven't had a chance to meet many developers, uh, but also because we've become so casual. Like it's, it's definitely not the days of IBM where everybody's in a suit and tie. At least the management's in a suit and tie and everyone else, else's business casual. So I imagine we'll see a spectrum, but it'll be interesting to see can come along for the journey and we'll uh, take a look at, at clothing choices of the developers. Now, because I have a formal, I decided to dress up more, so I'm gonna be overdressed for the developer conference, obviously. <laughs> Well, who knows, we'll see, but I would imagine I'm gonna be way overdressed and I'm gonna be perfectly dressed for the formal activity for the fundraiser and then I'm gonna be un overdressed for the spectacular. We're going to explore this idea of how to dress in certain situations and you know, I already know I'm gonna be overdressed, I have no choice, but we're gonna look at the way other people dress at the developer conference, at this formal event, and and at a kind of concert. So we're gonna pay attention and we're gonna learn something, I think, about what to do, what not to do, and does it all really matter? There's so many different colors in the hills here. It's really amazing. The rock colors, plant life. So far, I'm way overdressed. The only people who seem to be dressed up as much are women, which is interesting. Um, most people are casual jeans. I am happy to see several collared shirts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna hide the cufflinks. I'm gonna roll them up a little bit. And I went with the, uh, the collar stays. So to have kind of the popped up collar, if you haven't seen these little magnets, you get metal collar stays. 
and then you throw a magnet in there on the inside of your collar, it gives you this kind of nice collar thing, but uh, that's my strategy, so anyways. Hey guys, so we've been talking about how to dress up when coming to a developer conference and I found a couple of people here that do enjoy the, the value of dressing up and you know showing your personality through dress. And here I, I, I have Corey here with me and as you can see, he has this beautiful necktie on. He, he presented earlier at the conference and he chose the vest and the necktie as his uh, as his dress so I wanted to ask him a little bit about it tell me about the knot what's so yeah so this is a knot it's called the it's called the, the linwood torus actually supposedly because it looks like a bull uh, a, a guy named Lin, uh, linwood darkest uh, invented it and I learned it a couple of years ago. It's like you wear it tight like this where it's uh, kind of snug up against the knot or if you loosen it you got these nice little loops. Works better with a with different collar, but it, uh, I think it, I think it looks a little bit like an elephant head. He said it looks like a bull, but I I really like the tie, so I figured I'd give him a chance to tell us a little bit about it. So he was saying he knows about he can tie about ten different knots. What are some others that oh, you like? The uh, Van Wick. Van Wick super tight. That's dead simple to tie, um, and it looks really slick. Then there's aperture. Which is also really harder to tie. It's kind of like you took the uh, like a, a Trinity knot and like doubled it and then like opened it up. It's pretty wild. Uh, a Saturn knot. There's uh, several. Others. All right. So I was chatting more with Corey, just getting to know the area, and uh, turns out he he knows how to to tie the Van Wick knot by heart. And I was like, hey, do you want to tell everybody? And he's like, sure. So here's Corey teaching the Van Wick knot. So this one's really interesting. It's cool. It's quick to tie. It's really unique. So you want to get a rise up. So it's, uh, you want to you get your short end like pretty high up because it does heat up a lot. But we're just going to just gonna cross over. And then here's where it gets weird. We're going to put our finger from the top like this. We're just going to wrap around three times. Then it comes up from the, uh, from the back. Slide your finger out, slipping your other finger in through the same thing. We're gonna guide our big end through there. And that's it. After that, what you do, you have this cool cascading kind of thing. Tighten that up. And there you go. So uh -huh. you have this really cool kind of like stacked thing going on. Nice. Uh, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Corey, for uh, for telling us that knot, and uh, hopefully this makes it into the vlog. So thanks, um, thanks again. You're welcome. It was raining, so I couldn't get any shots outside of the noise of the event. But can you believe the luck to run into a necktie connoisseur? He knew several knots. I mean, I, I know several of, well, I've heard of several of the knots he mentioned, but I just like to understand which knots people like. And then to have him teach us a knot, that was awesome. I'm super excited about that. Granted, he was the only guy in the entire place that was wearing a tie. So I didn't even have a tie on. I did have a more formal white shirt. I would say he was, he probably wins the award for most dressed up. That said, he was also presenting. So, you know, if you present, you literally have to dress up. Man, some of these phrases though, I, you don't have to dress up, but it's unusual to not dress up and be presenting. It gives you an excuse to dress up, I guess. So overall, I was the second most dressed up, I would say, just because I had a more formal shirt on and some nice shoes and slacks. I did see a couple other guys in slacks. Most of the other people I saw that were dressed up, they were from the business school at BYU. And then other than that, I didn't get to talk to a couple people that were dressed up, but the rest were, were just women. Now, we get to switch gears. We're gonna go into some formal territory with the uh, formal wear fundraiser. I would imagine most people will be dressed up. If I had to guess, most people dressed up, couple people underdressed, but we'll see. All right, so this is, a, I guess it's a little bit smaller event than I was thinking, but I've already seen some people dressed up. I know I'm not the least dressed up. I do have my OUR tie. You can get this tie at MyNiceTie.com right now. Pre-orders are over. We're already shipping the tie, and it benefits Operation Underground Railroad. So definitely go check it out.
So this is like a concert. And again, I think the older generation is more dressed up. The younger generation is not really formal at all. I decided to go with the hoodie because I thought that would fit in more with the uh, younger crowd. I'm not sure why I didn't wear the hoodie as the last thing. That would have been a definite way to dress down the outfit. But I figured with the college student, I'd want to go even less dressy. And so I'm giving this a try. And plus it was raining, so it came in handy. Spread that joy when you go home, and God bless you all. Thank you so much. Alright, so I think my conclusion from this is that almost everybody older than 40 was dressed up and almost everybody under 40 was not dressed up at all, really. Anyway, so that is my vlog for today. I hope it was a little interesting, at least. Maybe you learned a new necktie knot. And uh, you can buy that tie I was wearing earlier, right now, at MyNiceTie.com. And as always, keep looking classy. This has been signing out.